Smoking a juicy, tender, and delicious brisket is a challenge, but I'm gonna show you how to do it and get it absolutely perfect every single time. Big thanks to Kamada Joe for sponsoring this episode. I think brisket is one of the most challenging pieces of meat to cook on a barbecue ever. And I'm pretty sure I messed up a good dozen of briskets. Not to the point that they're inedible, but just to the point where you think, maybe I shouldn't have spent all my money. And if you know that feeling, then that's the feeling that we're gonna solve today. I'm gonna show you how to make the perfect brisket on a ceramic barbecue. At the moment, we have got something exciting going on in the Netherlands that we might need to talk about first, because I used to get my brisket from USA, Australia, Canada, because they were making the best briskets. And it matters, because you want a brisket that has enough intramuscular fat, so the brisket will end up juicy. And at the moment, there's one program in the Netherlands that is producing consistent quality briskets, made out of a mixed breed from Black Angus and Holsteiner milk cows. You see, it's not very hard to raise one cow, a beautiful Black Angus or Wagyu cow, and have good results. The challenge comes when you want consistent results over a large amount of cattle, over multiple farms, so that you can serve a whole industry. Then that's where we always failed in the past in the Netherlands, but now we have Regiovent. Now, of course, I went to visit the butchers from Van der Zee, and we talked about how do you want to trim a brisket specifically for a style of barbecue or for restaurants. If you're cooking briskets on an offset smoker, you want a nice layer of fat sitting on top so the airflow doesn't affect the brisket and dry it out, but renders down the layer of fat. But if you're cooking on a ceramic grill like this, then you want a different brisket. And this is one of their briskets. And as you can see, there's a little bit of fat still on the brisket. So you actually have a choice whether you're either gonna leave it on, take it off. I'm just gonna take off the silver skin even more than it already is off. But with this level of silver skin and fat, you don't have to actually do that work. I just wanna expose that meat a little bit more so we can get more seasoning flavor on. Now at the bottom, we got an absolutely perfect brisket. Looks good. We can throw this on the grill as is, and it doesn't matter if you put this on a smoker or at a kettle grill or a ceramic barbecue. This bottom is the way it's supposed to look. But the difference starts when you start looking at the top of the brisket. Because if you have the top of the brisket, that fat is there to protect the brisket from drying out if you put it on an offset smoker. However, we are going to cook it on our ceramic barbecue. And that is when the difference starts. If you leave the fat cap on, you're gonna need to give it time to render down. But there's no hot, I will show you later on why there's no hot air flowing around it, but it's not gonna be there. So that's why you need to take it off. Because otherwise you have this fat cap that's not gonna do anything for you other than taste like biting into jelly fat and not be great as it should be, because we're talking about real good briskets here. And now I have all red meat available to me to add flavor to. First, I'm gonna put on a layer of seasoning. I'm gonna use the two layer system, and first I'm gonna start with the Pit Maastricht Texas seasoning, and that's salt, pepper, garlic, but it's a good base layer, and especially for thicker cuts of meat, you're going to need a good base layer. You gotta remember that this is going to end up as a slice, and once you slice it up, you only have the flavor that sits on the outside. Hopefully it penetrated a little bit to the inside, but still you're relying on that crust on the outside to give you that flavor. The second layer that I'm going to put on is the Pit Maastricht beef seasoning. And please do season only to the point where you can still see the red meat underneath. That is one good looking brisket. Both sides have plenty of flavor. I'm gonna let this sit on the board to absorb the flavors, to make sure that the seasoning sticks to the brisket. In the meantime, I'm gonna fire up the Kamado Joe Big Joe. It's important to know that if you're cooking on a ceramic grill and you're coming from, like say, an offset smoker, people tend to teach you about dirty smoke and white billowing smoke and crazy things, so like it's a bad thing. But with ceramic barbecues, types of smoke is completely different than the types of smoke that you get on an offset smoker. So if you start comparing the two, then a really nice thin blue smoke with a ceramic grill is actually bad because that means you're burning fat. And that burned fat is going to make your meat taste like, well, burnt fat. You want that nice white smoke that you get 
from a chunk of smoke wood and a little bit from the charcoal that you put in the grill. I'm going to open up the top vent by one and a half stripe and the bottom vent with about half a finger thick open. Now you want the bottom vent to be your control. So that is going to limit the amount of airflow and on top you just want the hot air to go out and you want a little bit of higher airflow. That's why this always needs to be a little bit more open than the bottom vent. I just got the notification, my brisket score temperature is 70 degrees Celsius. And that means it's time to check. You can see I got a red mahogany color and a crispy bark on the outside. Now I could take this further and smoke it some more until that bark gets darker, but I don't want to because I want a good tasting brisket. But because ceramic barbecues are famous for adding smoke flavor to dishes, you want to stop here because otherwise it's gonna to be too smoky. And too smoky means too much acidity and too much bitterness. If you take it all the way to a nice dark bark on the outside, it's gonna be over smoked and honestly, not that great to eat. So let's wrap this brisket up in aluminum foil, put it back on the smoker and let it continue to cook. One of my secrets is that I like to use aluminum foil in ceramic barbecues specifically instead of using butcher's paper. Now there are all kinds of tricks like putting beef tallow on butcher's paper, but it's never going to retain as much moisture as with aluminum foil. I just got the notification that the brisket is done. It's reached the core temperature, 92 degrees Celsius. I'm going to let it rest in the aluminum foil. The temperature might shoot up a little bit, say 94, 96, but then we need it to stop. We don't want it to go over to 98 because that is pulling temperature. We don't want pulled beef. We actually do want a brisket. However, I'm still keeping it in aluminum foil, but I'm leaving it on the countertop just to get rid of a little bit of that heat. And then we're going to really rest it. Now the next part of the process would be to open it up, start slicing into it and actually starting eating it. But the reason that brisket from restaurants tastes so freaking delicious is that they let it rest overnight. I mean, this brisket has been cooking for a long time, but we're actually going to need to let it rest even longer. Now, I'm not going to do the overnight. We still have plenty of time, but I'm at least resting it for two hours. That's the minimum. And then I can take it all the way to tomorrow or to whenever I want. Well, not whenever, but you know, you get the idea. Tomorrow for lunch, I can keep this in the oven at the warm keep setting of about 60 degrees Celsius and just let it rest there. And then finally, it's time to take a look at our beautiful and hopefully delicious brisket. Look at that, what a beauty. <laughs> look at that. All of that moisture. Boy, yo, yo. Now, this is not the most perfect brisket ever because you can have a Wagyu brisket that is like super marbled and it's gonna make everything super easy. But this looks fantastic. Look at the beautiful smoke ring that we've got. It's juicy, it's tender, but most importantly, the fat that sits between the flat and the point rendered down. So it's basically all gone and turned into delicious juices. Look at that. All of that turned into juices. Now let's summarize how to do this. You're gonna take a brisket, you're gonna trim it down. All the fat has to go, then you're gonna season it properly, which means you're gonna put on a little bit more seasoning than what you normally would, but you still wanna see a little bit of that meat. Then you're going to set your Kamado Joe up to smoke at a temperature of 120 degrees Celsius with a little bit of oak or beech and smoke that brisket until a core temperature of 70 degrees Celsius. Wrap it up in aluminum foil and put it back on the barbecue and smoke it until it hits a core temperature of 92 degrees Celsius. Take it off, let it rest and it might shoot up to 96, 97, but then it comes down again. You're gonna let it rest until it gets the core temperature of around 60 degrees Celsius which should take about two hours, three hours. And if it's going faster because it's cold outside, just pop it in the oven and set the oven to the low setting. And that's how easy it is to make brisket in your ceramic barbecue. Oh. That is ridiculous. Did you notice how I didn't speak about times? Because times don't matter. Times difference per brisket 
per humidity, per lots of things. And it really doesn't matter. Just start in time so that you've finished in time and you can rest for as ever long you want. But just start in time. Start 16 hours before you want your brisket to be done.